Ooh la la, hello, 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 hello on a gorgeous Monday. A phenomenal Monday to be alive and a phenomenal Monday for some mentorship out here. If you're brand new to the XMH, XMH Empire space, I want to welcome you. If you're an OG, if you're an original gangsta inside of the space, you can hashtag the words OG and let me know who you are if you've been here for a hot minute. If you are a newbie in our space, I want to welcome you and you can hashtag the word noob, N-E-W-B, rhymes with boob, noob. Um, we want to welcome you very, very, very warmly into this space, whether you're fresh and new or whether you've been here for a hot minute, I want to thank you for joining me today. So today's experience, which we drop fire in this space pretty much every month, is a conversation that I have had over and 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 over again in the last two weeks because it's happening in the energetic plane. And my wish would be that this content would go viral. My wish would be that everyone who witnesses this walks away changed. My wish would be that they shared it with their best friend, their sister, their cousin, their mama, their business partner, and any other one who could potentially benefit from this. That would be my wish because I feel like we are on a level of consciousness that is rising. I feel like women are rising. I feel like relationships are rising and there's a common thread that's happening right now and it involves us elevating in our emotional intelligence. So if you'll notice, the longer you hang out with me, the more you're going to hear me talk about this. I teach business strategy. If you're new to this space, I've been hosting masterminds and teaching business strategy since 2019. I am behind the scenes with many six-figure and higher brands. I'm very proud of that. And also I know that as much as I can teach strategy all day long, if people do not have a level of emotional intelligence, self-awareness, and just an understanding of their energetics, they cannot thrive. So while a lot of people are drawn to me because of my work in business, the conversation that we're going to have today is a conversation that I have with many women who are not even entrepreneurs. So the pre-qualifier for today is not that you be an entrepreneur. Pretty much every woman is welcome to this conversation. If you know someone that should be here, I ask you, share this. By the end of today's conversation, if you watch it to the end, you are going to think of people that should be here. Please be generous with the free content and invite them. There's healing to be had when more women can conversate about this together. And so I welcome you today to day number one of boundaries for big girls or big girl boundaries. And when I say big girls, I don't mean like big in size necessarily. I mean big in energy. I mean women who are big in destiny. I mean women who are full grown women out here that are meant to lead a lot of impact and also, they have a hard time drawing a line around their energetics. And so if you are someone who is like that, this conversation is for you. It's going to be pretty high level. This is going to be the things that I'm speaking about with my private clients behind the scenes right now. These are the conversations that are being had in my paid circles of entrepreneurship. So I want to warmly welcome you in. We're going to have a big day today. So if you're ready for a big day, can you hashtag the words big day? Because I hope that this changes your life. Now, I am a principle-based teacher. There's a lot of teachers out there who will invite you to a free masterclass and they will just riff for an hour and really say a whole lot of nothing. And then they pitched you at the end. I call it the riff and pitch. That's not what this is. Today, I have notes because I teach principles. And so if you're a note taker, I would have you like literally either watch this with notes right now, be really interactive in the comment section because if you write something down that you hear, you're so much more likely to retain it. Or if you wanna listen to it now and just be as present as you can be and come back and take notes like tonight or tomorrow, I would invite you to do that. You're gonna get the most out of it that way whenever you have someone who teaches principles. 
So if you're down for that, give me some lightning bolts in the comment section. I'm a big lightning bolt lover. That's my very favorite emoji. And that makes me feel like we have a great energetic exchange when you guys actually speak to me in the comment section. And you are going to know what that means by the end of today. You are going to know exactly what I mean by an energetic exchange. You're going to know what I mean about reciprocal energy. You're going to know what I mean about the word boundary. And today is going to set the tone for tomorrow. So I have my notes. And I want to kick her off. Okay, so throw me all the emojis. Let's go. First, I want to say that whether you believe in it or not, we are in an astrological season of growth. Whether you believe in God, a creator, or whether you believe in the, the moon, stars, and the sky and energy, we're all really talking about the same things. And there is a season changing now. So many of my clients are sending me content about this. I'm, I'm noticing it myself and I'm seeing patterns arising in people that are aligned with this change of seasons. It's been happening, like coming to a head in the last two weeks. If you have felt boredom, frustration, lack of motivation, discomfort, hashtag the word seasons change. Is anyone else feeling it or just me and all my clients? I don't think we're the only ones. Astrologically, there was an event last week. It was with the full moon and what I am learning, and I am no astrologer. I am no expert in the stars. We have people in this group that are, and maybe they could tell you more. But what I am understanding is that there was a two and a half year, approximately karmic season that came to an end last week. Think about that. There was an energetic portal that was two and a half years long and it came to a close last week and a fresh season opened. Think about that. If you consider karma, as a word, and some people don't believe in that, so I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna use a different phraseology for this. Life lessons and seasons. There was a two and a half year life lesson season for you, where you were in a bubble of evolution, growth, signs, miracles, change, life lessons were happening. Now, for me personally, and you can tell me how you feel, I had a kick-ass two and a half years. I had a wonderful previous two and a half years. That last season for me, karmic season, was phenomenal. I, I don't have complaints about that season of my life. It was badass. There are some people who don't feel that way about the last two and a half years, and they're like, yes, let it be over, new season. I have to tell you something. Just because, like in energy and in space and with, with the planets, just because a season ended doesn't mean that any negatives that were in that season also came to an end. In fact, if you didn't catch the lessons, they are probably bitch slapping you right now. Energetic bitch slap. They're like, we have been trying to get your attention for two and a half flipping years you are not listening. You didn't catch the lesson. We sent the gentle messenger. We sent teachers. We sent you reels to watch. We sent you books to read. We sent you podcasts. We, God, angels in the universe, have served you many teachers. We have sent you people. When you got away from that toxic person, we sent you another toxic person. And you still haven't gotten the flipping lesson. And so now that we are at the end of this season of Education, if you have not gotten the lesson, we are here to bitch slap you. Has anyone gotten a bitch slap in the last week and a half? Two weeks-ish? Oh yeah, baby. It's real. It's real. It's happening. Anyone else with a karmic bitch slap? Yeah. And if you don't believe in karma, it's like, like God, angels, Everyone being like, we have been trying to get you out of this loop for two and a half years. We've sent you all the things. You are still in the loop. 
wake up. <laughs> I've, got, I've had my little share of that. It's great. It's phenomenal. <laughs> And there's some of you who are like, no, it felt absolutely great. Well, then guess what? You caught your lessons. You caught your lessons in that, in that karmic season. And now you're ready for a fresh start. But for those of you who are like, yeah, last week and a half has been a little, a little like tense. It's like some things are coming to a head. This is where the boundaries conversation has to come in. And here's why. That two and a half year season that's coming to a close, there's a fresh season opening. And we, as a conscious collective, are being asked something. In order to move into the next season, as a global consciousness, we are being asked to examine, write the word examine in your notes or in the comments, we are being asked to examine what patterns systems, daily habits, conversations, relations, and rituals that we've been in for the last two and a half years. We're being asked to just examine and see like, are these going with us into the next season? Question mark. Oh, snip. We're being asked to look. We okay. We're being asked to say what is out of alignment, number one. Going into the next season of my life, what's out of alignment? Great question to ask yourself. And what situations are draining my life force? Mm. Mm. A lot of this is very personal. If it's happening in your personal life, obviously it's going to carry over into business, but today we're going to, we're going to focus on the personal stuff. This is why I say you don't have to be an entrepreneur to be in this conversation because this is just for women in general. This is the personal stuff today. So let's get into the principles. You can say, Principle number one in the comment section. Principle number one. Here we go. All right. So the first thing that I want to teach you guys on is something that is commonly called an energy leak. So principle, principle number one, what's an energy leak? You will hear me talk about this. We went on a deep dive for them in Clear to Soar this last year in December. I walked over 100 clients through really a healing portal in December. How many of you were there in Clear to Soar? Please write Clear to Soar or give me a bird in the comment section to indicate that you were there. So in Clear to Soar, we literally did energy clearing, emotional intelligence work, future casting, vision casting, and helped women to walk into the next evolution of life being 2023. It was phenomenal. And I taught about clearing up energy leaks. But if you missed that training, or maybe it's just not top of mind because it was a couple months ago, I want to give you a quick refresher of what do I mean when I say energy leaks? Because this is what you're meant to be examining right now in this season. As a conscious collective, we're being asked. An energy leak is anything that is draining your life force. An energy leak is anything that is draining your life force. We all were an energy body. Human beings, we are an energy body. And everyone has a different energetic capacity. We have different energy bandwidths. We all have a different frequency. Some people have a very large, expansive energy. Some people have like a really tight and potent type of energy like my projectors have a lot of that. I see Orlan watching live. She's that. She's she's a she's a tight potent energy as a projector. Some of us have huge energy, like just limitlessness, right? And so we all have a different frequency, a different bandwidth, a different capacity. 
But no matter who you are and how much energy you have in your energy body currently, there can be things, people, situationships, events, commitments that literally drain your life force. You have an amount of energy going into every single day. And how many know that there are little things that I have a favorite, a favorite peer in the industry. She calls it a niggle. I just, I, I, I imagine someone like, you know, when people tickle you, but it's annoying. Like it's not even a tickle. It's just a, right. It's like a little niggle underneath your skin. It's like, there's little things that niggle you every day. They live rent free in your head. They're in the back of your mind always conflicts, conversations that need to be had, things that haven't been addressed, the mess in the closet. There's just stuff that niggles you. That's an energy leak. Because you have this personal potency in your energy body and anything that's draining or drawing off of that and there's not an exchange back, it's pulling from your life force. You have a destiny that you're meant to live there are things purposefully that you came here to this earth plane to do. There's a purpose for your life. And there are things that every day pull from your purpose. Does that land? So principle number one, an energy leak. It's anything that is leaking your life force or draining out your bigger calling. Another great word for these, they're called incompletions. Write that down. An energetic leak is an incompletion. Think of a circle being drawn on a paper, right? A circle. If the circle's open, there's an incompletion. The energy goes out the circle. So there's things and conversations and tasks that you have to bring full circle in order for you to be ready for the next season. Otherwise, the energy goes out the open leak. It's an incompletion. One of the most mature things I've ever witnessed women do is complete their incompletions. Because it's not always comfortable, but once you do it, you're whole. Right? It's like drawing, drawing this picture right here. And my beautiful Alpha Femme notebook. Thank you, Mal, Melanie, and Lair. Check this out. So I'm going to draw a circle. And I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Oh, the last part is really uncomfortable. If I complete this incompletion, someone might be mad at me. I'm going to have to, quote unquote, draw a line with some people, some situations. And this part, the last little bit here, completing the incompletion is so flipping uncomfortable. People might hate me. People might be mad at me. People might be disappointed at me. I'm a really good person. I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to let anyone down. And yet this is incomplete. So this incompletion is letting all of your gas out. It's out. All of your life force, we're going to call this your life force. This is your energy body life force. You've got an open incompletion. You've got shit that's not figured out. You have things that have been hanging in the air and you know how to fix it, but you are so scared. And all of your energy on a daily basis is just going out, 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 out. You got to draw a line. This is called a boundary. This is a boundary line. We're going to close the incompletion and we're going to keep all of our life force in there. We're going to keep all of our life force inside the energy body. I don't know about you, but I'm a visual learner. And so sometimes seeing stuff like that, it's like, oh my God, that makes so much sense. We want to keep our life force. We want to keep our energy body potent. You have a purpose on this planet. There are things you are meant to come here and do. And if you're boundaryless, and if you have open leaks in your life that just every day, they bother you a little bit, little comments, little conversations, little tasks that haven't been done and you keep meaning to do it, this is what's playing out in your subconscious mind and it's stealing your energy, it's robbing your destiny. 
at this time, cosmically, we're being asked to complete our incompletions. Is it clear? Okay, so principle number one, what's an energy leak? Now you know. If you just joined live, I want to say welcome. Welcome to the space. We're having a badass life class today. Get to change some lives. Invite your best friend, your mommy, your girlfriend. <laughs> I happen to love that, just by the way. We have a space called, well, we had Clear to Soar in December, and then we have a space called The Sisterhood. And I love it when my clients come and they bring their sister and they bring their mom because a lot of this stuff is generational and it's not taught to us as women and it's the bones of life. We have to understand how to literally shift our energy and have, have emotionally responsible conversations that lead to more more depth, more love, more power, more understanding, more impact. And so I just really love it when people bring their mom and their sister and their coworker into these spaces because you're going to learn here today and tomorrow how to have conversations that broach the topic of the stuff that you don't want to say. The things that are robbing your energy every day. So if you have someone that you know is meant to be here, lovingly shoot them an invite. It's free. Okay. So the second thing, we're going to move into principle number two. So if you're live, put in the comment section, principle number two. I want to teach you some, some energy, some energy work. Big fan right here of the energetics of emotions. So if you've not encountered my work before, I'm going to give you Cliff's notes. Scientifically, every emotion can be measured with with frequency so anger has a frequency joy has a frequency agreement has a frequency beauty has a frequency love has a frequency connection to the divine has a frequency hatred has a frequency they all have a frequency and so what we can do on a daily basis is we can check in and see like where are we on the chart of frequency and we can make it our life's work to become more emotionally well. This is emotional work. This is frequency work. This is energetics. So energetics, when you see that in my content, I'm talking about the frequency of emotions and making your energy body bigger, bigger capacity. This is some of my work in the world with my clients, making your energy field bigger for more impact, increasing your capacity. If you've worked with me and you've increased your capacity, please raise a hand in the comments. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the vibes. <laughs> I love you, Cheryl. Um, let's see. So I want to talk about input, output, and flow. So you can write down input, output, flow. Input, output, flow. Input, output, flow. These are three words you should get really clear in your vocabulary if you are mastering your energetics and your emotions and you have to understand boundaries. This is going to inform your next moves around boundaries. Okay. So I want you to become aware. If you are an energy body, if you're like a circle of energy, think of it like a cup. Your body is a, is a masculine structure. It has structure. It's a container. And there's energy, emotion, and life force inside the cup. There are locations, conversations, input, books, that literally, it's like they take a watering can and they pour into your cup. You're being fed. You're being nourished. More is being given to you. You're elevating, you're growing, you're becoming more, you're becoming the fullness. This is receiving mode. When something is pouring into you, you're receiving good nutritional input 
from content, relationships, spaces, locations, experiences. This is receiving mode. I totally will, Molly. You're in receiving mode. That's input. That's someone, who's, someone or something is watering you. Now, I get input a lot of different ways. I get it from going to the beach. I get it from quiet time. I get it from affirmations music. I get it from hugging my kids. I get it from taking a bath. I, take, I get it from podcasts. I get it from my mentors. I get it from reading for pleasure. There's a lot of things that fill my cup up, and that's input. There are people that are my friends that are input friends. The conversation enriches me. I'm being filled in the conversation. It's wonderful. So know who and what in your life is the nourishing input. That's a mode of energetics. That's when your energetics are getting put back in. It's nurturing and it's healing, okay? So there's input. Then I'm going to move it to flow. Then there's flow. There's things that you do on a daily basis with your energy body that are just flow. It's neither input nor output. It just is. This is the being part of your energy body. This is not the receiving and this is not the giving. This is just the being. This is flow. There are some of you that when you're in your work hours, you're literally just in flow. It doesn't feel like you're doing much. It's second nature to you. For me, things that are flow are like um, doing my makeup, getting dressed in the morning, um, certain conversations that I have. It's neither draining me of energy nor is it super giving me energy. It's just I'm in flow. It's, it's ease and flow. It's easy. And a lot of us live our lives in an incredible amount of ease and flow. Thank God, first world problems. It's an incredible life. Ease and flow. And then there's a third energetic modality that I would, I would refer to as output. So output is when your energy body is intentionally giving something. Output for me can be when I'm creating content, like right now, walking into this with my notes, there was a level of output. There was an intentionality. There was an extraction of lessons. It's been two weeks of lessons and conversations with clients around this very topic, people really analyzing what's working for them. And for me to sit and take all the lessons from the last two weeks and turn it into a life class for you, there's a level of output. There's ease and flow to it because I'm used to doing this, but it is output. You're intentionally giving something, okay? You've got to recognize when you're in output, when energy is going out from you. If any of you study scripture, there was a place where someone literally touched Jesus and he said, who touched me? I felt energy leave my body. I felt power leave from me. You need to become a master of understanding when you have output. When are you in output mode? Because this is a key to boundaries. This class is called Big Girl Boundaries because there are so many women who, God love you, but like y'all sometimes are in so much victimhood. And you're like, oh my God, this thing happened to me and this person did this thing and I hate when this, when this event happens and it happens every three weeks and I have the same conversation all the time and I'm not being heard, da, 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 da. My mom drives me nuts. My sister drives me nuts. I can't stand my pastor. Like I hear the, I hear the thick of it. And I'm like, okay, and I love you, but we've got to get energetic mastery. You need to understand that the reason that this is painful for you is because you have an opening. You have an incompletion in your communication and in your boundaries. 
And as long as you have that incompletion open, people will take. You will be in output mode. So I'm going to take this into like a real life example because a lot of you don't realize that you are in output mode and it doesn't feel fair because there's supposed to be a reciprocal energy. So watch me. Me personally, I get paid dearly and gorgeously and magically for mentoring and coaching people. I've been holding masterminds at many different levels, including very high level with women since 2019. I hold space for women to rise. When people tell me all of their problems, there's an energetic output simply by holding space. Meaning, I hold still in my energy and I will not get in the boat with people about their problems. When a client comes to me and tells me something horrible happened in their life and how they are in victimhood, I am able to say, I see you. I understand how that would be not comfortable. And also, I cannot agree with you being a victim here unjustly. I will stay in my power and I will give viable feedback so that you can rise to your own power. I'm going to hold still and I will hold space for you and I will hold energy for you and I will hold power for you so that you can step into your own power and walk towards power. I get paid for that. I have a moral responsibility to hold space and be in my power. It becomes different when I'm oot and boot, as the Canadians would say. And like, someone just wants to like word vomit on me. And a lot of us as women have been programmed to just hold space for people. We have been, we have been programmed that it is the Christian thing to do. It is the kind thing to do. It is the spiritual thing to do. And it is the right thing to do for you to have compassion, listen, understand, and hold space for people. There's so much societal conditioning for women about our, our behaviors and what's a good girl and what's a good Christian, and what's a good wife, and what's good spiritually, and who's a great spiritual leader. And I, I want to close this loop for you. There has to be a proper energetic exchange for you supporting, encouraging, giving feedback to, giving advice to, and quote unquote, holding space for people to rise, coaching them for free. I don't care if you're not a coach, get this in your bones. There are some of you who like your mama calls, your auntie calls, your old best friend calls, and it is always a one way street. If you have one of those people and they come top of mind and God, you love them, but it's a one way street, hashtag one way street. There are people who see you as a spiritual leader or a leader or just someone that they, they're so inspired by and they so look up to you and you're the person that they call when they're having a rough day. It's like you're their free support system. And that, my love, is an energy leak. Because you are giving output. You are outputting your life force for this person. I'm going to say something that was, it probably will not land for some people. And for some of you, you have been waiting for this permission all your freaking life. If y'all don't have a vagina connection, you're not responsible. Here's what I mean. I'm responsible to hold space for my kids because we have a vagina connection. They came out of my vagina. 
I am theirs for life. Like I am their person. I am their, I am their partner. I am their comrade. I am their support. I am their guide. Like I agree to that in the spiritual realm. I am their person. We have a vagina connection. Nah, they're my baby. My husband and I, I have a level of responsibility with him karmically and spiritually because we have a vagina connection. He's up in there, okay? We have a soul connection. It matters to me what happens to this man. It matters to me when there's something not going right in his life. There, I have, I have an agreement with him of mutual support. I will hold space for that man. We have a vagina connection, okay? My mother and I, even if she was my adopted mom, but she's not, she's my mother. We have a vagina connection. I don't care who wants to say that it doesn't matter. Like she and I, we got a thing. I'm always gonna be wondering about my mama. Helping, like being part of her evolution, holding space in a way, in a mutually good exchange way, but we have a vagina connection. Anyone else in the world, this is my hard line, anybody else in the world that I don't have a vagina connection with, we have to have reciprocation and mutual exchange for it to be an energetically balanced relationship for me. I won't coach people for free. I don't hold space for people for free. I don't field questions for free. Unless it feels so good to me and it's in flow. Like if you don't have a vagina connection to me, expect to pay me or expect to be my equal so that it feels enriching for me to hang. That's a boundary. And that's a boundary that some of you guys have been waiting to hear your whole life because you're like, I just, I feel like I'm the space holder for everybody. I hold space for everybody. I'm everybody's backup person. I'm the person that they call when they need a ride. They need 10 bucks. They need a listening ear. They need somebody to cry to. They need advice. Like y'all, if they don't have a vagina connection to me or they're not my client, I do not feel responsible. God bless America. It is better for me to go live my life and continue living and be a beacon for people to rise. And that's how I hold space for them than for me to go left, right, and center solving people's problems. That's a drain to my life force, right? Either, or either we flow or you go to the PayPal link. That's right. Hey, hey, that's a great song. Is this landing for you guys? Like, are you really getting it energetically? You are an energy body. All of your situationships and experiences is like either it's input, it's putting good nourishment in, it's in flow, and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy, or it's output. And if it's output, you got to look at that. A boundary, a boundary is is a is a protection for your life force having boundary lines around you i want you to picture like a big pyramid drawn around you it's a boundary line around your life force it's a completion it's a protection of your energy body What I want you to walk away from today with in primary is to be able to look at your life and go like, okay, what things put me into output? What things really pull from my life force energy? If I wasn't dealing with these five things all the time, would my life have more impact? Would I have more sustainability? Would I be doing something different? Am I missing my calling? Cause I'm, I'm messing around down here with all of these energy leaks. Cause so many of you are asking for the next season. You want richer relationships. You want deeper friendships. You want deeper conversations. You wish for more intimacy. You wish for a bigger business or more money. And the thing is like, you're entertaining so much stuff 
that is not an equal match to you, that there's no freaking space for it. Because there's no boundary around you. And there's something called energetic protection, which I call like guardian angels or God or the universe having your back, right? Which is we can ask for things all day long and we can like speak them out of our mouth and manifest them coming to be, da 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 But if you have energy leaks everywhere, you're not going to get what you're asking for because you can't handle having it. There's not space for you to have it. And so God and the universe and the angels are like, we are going to protect you from your own self-destruction right now. As much as you think you want this thing that you're asking for, like you can't hold it. Ooh! Cheryl said, I set a boundary that felt right to me and it felt like it bit me the hardest I've ever been bitten. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow because I want to walk you guys through actually setting some boundaries. So if you like today, tomorrow is going to be even more fire, but we got to lay the groundwork. Okay. So principle number two is understanding what's your input, what's your output, and where are you in flow and get really, get some mastery around this. Start asking yourself when you're in conversations where you start getting uncomfortable, why am I uncomfortable here? Oh, because I feel like I need to be an output. I feel like I need to coach this person. I feel like I need to hold the space. Wait, are they paying me? No. Do I have a responsibility to this? No. Is this mine? See, it didn't come out of my body. It doesn't go in my body and I didn't come out of its body. So no, it's really not. Huh. Fascinating. Okay. I feel like I could hold, I could teach a whole masterclass on family boundaries, but there's more in here. Just keep listening. All right. So principle number three, are you ready for principle number three? You like this principle-based teaching? I'm a big fan of it. I always want you to walk away equipped. I want you and anyone who comes to listen to this to walk away and go like, hot damn, Extina Harmsworth of the Extina Ar Harmsworth Empire teaches. Her life classes are a teaching uh, your life will change from this. This is the reputation that I care to have about these classes. So I'm going to freaking teach you. All right. Here we go. So principle number three. I want to define reciprocal relationships. Type that word out. Reciprocal. R-E-C-I-P-R-O-C. A-L, reciprocal, reciprocal relationships, reciprocal relationships. Right now we are being asked to look at this as a global consciousness moving into our next season. For me, it picked up in December. I was really being asked to look at who in my life were reciprocal people. During clear to soar in December, if you were there and you did the lessons, meaning we, we did an activation, a mind, soul, spirit activation where we pulled life lessons out of 2022. And in my lessons, I had a bunch of stuff around my relationships. And I, I was being called even in December to look at what relationships are reciprocal. Here's what I mean by that. A reciprocal relationship means both parties bring their power and their wholeness and their agreement the same into the relationship or there's an exchange. I'm going to start with friendship and family because some of you are like, how do I deal with like my friends from back in the day? I'm outgrowing them. Is anybody outgrowing some people right now? That's normal. Does anyone feel like you've outgrown some people in your family? That would be normal. You're part of communities like this. You're working on your personal development. You are elevating your energy body. You're, you're outgrowing, right? And so if you're aware of when you're in input, output, and flow, and you go into 
let's say um, you're going to go on a trip with somebody that you love, a dear friend, a family member, etc. And you get on the trip and all the person does is talk about things that don't stimulate you. They cause you to have to really hold on to your power and not get in their boat. They tempt you into victimhood with the conversation. The experience feels like crabs in a barrel where they know that you've been doing coaching or personal development, so they start asking you questions. They start tiptoeing into the free coaching realm. And even if you're not coach, they're just asking for advice. They're telling you their drama and their trauma. And you're like, wow, it's actually, it's actually there's, I opened, I opened an energetic opening here because I thought that there was intimacy, but actually all my energy is leaking. And you go like, oh no, oh no. This is not a reciprocal relationship where power meets power and we vibe together and we're in flow. This is a, I'm holding the line and I'm giving and they're taking. And this is going to happen for the next two and a half hours. Oh, Jesus, help me, God. The feeling that you feel in your body is going to inform you of whether your relationships are reciprocal or not. Power meets power. But watch this, okay? Reciprocal relationship. As a coach and mentor, I get paid to hold space for people to have that experience. I get paid to hold a line for people and sometimes to reflect back to them and, and to be a power so that I can meet their power. But it's reciprocal because they're paying me. I'm so happy to do it because me standing in my power allows my clients to rise to their power and then it becomes a power meets power. And there's a gap there that I'm willing to stand in and traverse with people. No problem. And it can be very uncomfortable for the client for me to hold my boundaries and to hold my lines and to not jump into their boat when they're having a hard moment. This is what I signed up for. Now, when you have non-reciprocal relationships that are just pulling from you and pulling from you and pulling from you and it's exhausting because you've been holding your line for two and a half hours on a coffee date and you're like, <gasps> you leave there and you're like, my life force, I need a nap, right? A lot of the coaching industry and a lot of personal development just says cut those people off. And I don't believe that. Write down invitation to rise. Write it in the comments right now. Write invitation to rise. Invitation to rise, 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 invitation to rise. Because you know what I know about me? I'm feeling very entertained. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but yeah, it says we pause for a minute. Let's see if it's back. I can see 10 people watching. Let's see. Then I got the weirdest prompt I've ever seen in my life. It was Facebook Live asked me if I wanted to continue my video. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I've never seen that in my life. Okay, we're back. That was weird. We're back. Okay, so here we go. I wonder if the whole video will upload or if it will disappear at the end. I have no idea. Okay, so here it is. There's an invitation to rise. There are so many people that say, just cut folks off. I literally just watched 
a Steve Harvey video where he was like, no, 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 you know, you're going to have people that don't believe in your mission and you just got to cut them off. And I have had mentors that just tell people, you know, if they're not on your level, just cut them off. Here's what I know. Here's what I know that 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 I know is I have been the non-reciprocal friend. I have been the bullshit motherfucker that is up in the business being like, oh my God, so much drama. Like, oh my God, this thing always happens to me. I was the person in my old friendships that always had marriage drama back in the day. And I would just expect my friends to hold space for me because I thought that that's what friendship was. I 100% have been the person with my mom because we got a vagina connection. I came out of there, man. Right? That like my mom would hold so much love and compassion for me and I would tell her everything that was wrong. And I would not talk to my mom for like a whole week. And then I would call her when there was a problem. Like, I just expect you to drop everything that you're doing right now and listen to me complain. I have been the shit friend. I have been the needy person. I have been the loud person. I have been the person that went on trips and brought all my freaking drama with me and probably ruined everyone else's time. I have been the inconsiderate person. I have fought with my first husband in cars, on the phone, screaming at him while I'm in a car with my girlfriends on a night out. That was like the, the early 20 year old version of me. But like I was that loud ghetto motherfucker that just thought my friends should tolerate this. They're my friends. My mom should tolerate this. She's my mom. That's what she's supposed to do. And that is a level of emotional intelligence that a lot of women are playing on. And then we do some personal development. We get on our little high horse and we're, we think are all high and mighty. And then we're like, cut those people off. You are that person. You were that person. Come on. Do not act like your shit doesn't stink. I was that person. It is very, very uncomfortable to go back and think about all the times when I was that loud, ghetto, in your face, assertive, fighting in public, complaining for hours type of person. I have had friends that held so much space for me that I don't even know how they stayed friends with me. And so for me to rise and have a coach in my ear that says, just cut people off. That was, that was really um, not great advice for me personally. Cause you know that, that, that saying like, I'm the problem. It's me. I am the problem. It's me. It was me. And then I learned a couple things that grew my emotional intelligence. And I was like, oh my God, I can't be with people like that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Lisa. Let's bring it full circle. Invitation to rise. We aren't born knowing this stuff about our energy body. We're not born knowing all the emotional intelligence. We all evolve. We're all growing together. And this is what I love about our spaces, like the sisterhood and the millionaire's desk, etc. Because I don't consider myself to be this perfect angel of a human. I consider myself to be a leader who's done a lot of work. And also, I know that I'm walking shoulder to shoulder with my next peers in the industry. I know I'm walking with women on the rise. And so instead of cutting people off, there's an invitation to rise. And this is where boundaries come in. A 
A boundary is an invitation to rise. A boundary, it's not a cutoff. The word boundary used to scare the crap out of me because I would be like, ooh, someone's about to fight, someone's about to get cut off, someone's about to get fired, someone's about to get broken up with, this is about to be a problem, this is gonna be a conflict. And the word boundary always represented a death to me. It scared the crap out of me, but I don't see it that way anymore. To me, a boundary is an invitation to rise. Write that down. A boundary is an invitation to rise. When you learn how to speak a boundary, you are really asking for power to meet power. You are calling people literally into more intimacy with you. You're not cutting people off. You're calling power to power. You're asking for people to rise. You're, you're asking power to rise and meet power. You're asking for a reciprocal relationship where you're not always the one who's most spiritual and most wealthy and most knowing and everyone takes or most sympathetic and people show up and grab. A boundary is you learning to effectively communicate this is what I desire. This is what I expect. This is what it's like to really walk in intimacy with me. And when you set a boundary, you get to find out who's willing to rise. Or which ones bite you. And the ones that bite you are perhaps not a reciprocal relationship. So Jolene is asking, how does this work in a, new, in a new relationship? I literally, I want to invite you, be here for tomorrow because I'm, I'm going to talk about laying out actual structures for people to rise to. So day two, we're going to focus deeply on this. Today is about you, your personhood, your power, and understanding these concepts. Exactly, Ohlan. I love that, Okay. So reciprocal relationships, they're, they're where your power is met and matched. So a reciprocal relationship to me in friendship, it's someone where like when we walk together, it's either flow or input. The, these are relationships where like I could sit on the beach with a friend and I don't get pulled into coach mode. If there's natural flow and we're both giving and it's beautiful, that's great. But the minute that it feels like, oh my God, now I'm just giving, 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 giving. They're taking, they're taking, they're taking, they're taking. I'm getting pecked at. They're a freaking woodpecker on my beach chair. Help me, God, I came here to relax. If it feels like that, that's not reciprocal. That's not power meeting power. That's not me bringing power and them bringing their power. And we meet and we match and we have the best conversation and the best experience together. And we sharpen each other and we love each other and we, we mutually share ideas. It's a mutual exchange of energy. With my husband, it's power meeting power. Yes. Sonia, yes. I talk about this a lot. Permission space coaching, it's a whole need. <laughs> ask. Ask before you give advice, right? So it's mutual. And with a client relationship, it's mutual because they're literally paying for that time. It's mutual because I'm showing up in my power and they're also showing up in their power. And their power is rising because they're bringing the hard things and I'm holding my ground. And they're paying for that, so it's reciprocal. Yes, my I'm giving input. Or I'm sorry, I'm giving them input, which means energy is leaving my body, but they're giving money. So it's an equal exchange. It's reciprocal. This is a reciprocal relationship. So when you look at your life that way, and you're like, okay, I know when I'm in in output mode and I know the people who are happy to take as long as I'm giving, it's time to draw boundaries around that. And a lot of you have not even thought about the fact that you could say no. Exactly, Lacey. It's either power meets power 
and we're rising together or they're paying you. That's the vibe. And if you have the vagina connection, you get to you get to decide how responsible you are there. The vagina connection meaning it's your kid, it's your mama, it's your partner. There's more there than just a friendship or a client. It's it's a different level. Okay. All right. So, we're going to go into our fourth principle. If you have a pulse and you're live, and you're available for the next piece of this life class, put principle four in the comment section. You're gonna have to make an evaluation of who and where you're being nourished. If you're here watching this live, this is nourishment for you. I'm in output mode, you're in input mode. This is soul nourishment. This is emotional intelligence work. This is nourishing your mind. This is teaching you about relationships. This is helping you see from a different angle. You are in input mode right now. You're being nourished. Where else in your life do you get nourishment from? So in your notes, I literally want you to write down input modes and I want you to start noticing where do you get more life force energy? Where do you get encouragement? Where does, where does energy get given to you? Where does wisdom get given to you? Where does your, your soul get nourishment from? And sometimes it's not people. For me, sunlight is one of them. Being out in the sun is one of them for me. So it can be unconventional. Going on a walk sometimes or going to the beach, that is like nourishment to me personally. Affirmation music, nourishment for me personally, right? Okay, so vibes here. Your principle number four is evaluation. You need to evaluate where your nourishment comes from. <laughs> Orlan, I keep on hearing that. Orlan says, I get more from this brand than what I even get at church. I know. <laughs> what do we call that? <laughs> <laughs> the Church of XMH. <laughs> so funny. Okay. You want to evaluate where are you in flow? Like you're, you're doing input, you're doing output, but it just feels like nothing. You're just in flow. It is what it is, right? It's just flow. It's your brilliance. It's your genius. You could do it all day long. It doesn't take from you. You're in flow. And the third place that I really want you to do an evaluation on is where are you in output mode? and who puts you in output mode, but it's not reciprocal. What situations and what people and what locations put you into output mode and they're not reciprocal? You're getting nothing back from it, except an ego stroke that you're a great person and that's a whole different conversation. Besides knowing you are so powerful and you are so mighty and you're on your high horse and you are always the one that everyone has to turn to because you're so strong, that's an ego issue, love. So aside from ego strokes, if you're not getting anything out from it, but it's always output from you, you need a list of what those are. Woo! Orlan said, let me send my tithe and offering to the Church of XMH. Listen, just bring yourself into locked and loaded. <laughs> that's 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 perfect for me <laughs> reciprocal <laughs> anyways okay where who and what what are the things and the next question here that has to be evaluated is is this worth a conversation. This is where people fuck it up. There's this weird thing in the healing spaces and in the coaching world where like once people realize that there's boundaries available, they're like, oh my God, I need to have the boundaries conversation with this person that is not even relevant to my life in five years. Um, that's called an energy leak. Mm -hmm. 
when you have places of output where your energy, your life force is leaking out of your body on a daily basis because of something that needs to be a completion, it might just be a completion in you of, I'm not going to go there anymore. I'm just not sleeping with that guy anymore. I'm not answering the text anymore. I do not owe this person an explanation. I'm complete. Some people cannot even receive the wisdom that you're about to lay down and it's not yours to invite them to rise. Know the difference. There are people that like, there is a possibility of a long-term amazing relationship with them, but there, there has to be a conversation, which is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. There's got to be a conversation. There has to be an invitation to rise. If you see a long-term relationship with this person, like there's an invitation to rise. And then there's people that you even giving them the invitation because it takes so much boldness and love and holding of your own power to even offer someone an invitation to walk with you. That it's not even worth it. It's not yours. And one of the things that I think cosmically right now and energetically as a planet that we are being asked to look at is like, what stuff are you picking up that's not yours to deal with? Not everybody is your mission field. Write these two words down, false responsibility. I personally want to model breaking off false responsibility. There's people that you would just give to in terms of invitations for them to rise, sending them podcasts to listen to, offering them chances, and they're not taking it. And you have a false responsibility that somehow it's yours to fix. There are also people that like you just know, like in your heart of hearts, that even if you offer them an invitation to rise, it would backfire in your face. You know, there's certain ones that you just know. It's already been settled in your heart and soul. You've already tried before. There's like, okay, I'm actually not responsible for this. I love them. And like I have given chances and now it's time for me to resign from my false responsibility and allow their life to be their teacher. There are people that you have been programmed to feel responsible for and you're not. They're not your client. They're not a reciprocal relationship. You do not have a kin connection. It's not your circus. And there's times when you get to just exit and literally like let their life be their teacher because they're not getting it from you. And that is an energy leak. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. But things like, your clients, your peers, your mom, your kids, your best friends, people that you have a long-standing relationship and you don't want to lose it, these people are worth tomorrow's class. People that you can see a long-term vision with, tomorrow's class, you want to be here for. It matters. Because there's a way to do this well. Okay? Now, the last principle that I want to say here is that Principle number five, give me lightning bolts if you're ready for our final principle. Near 90% of what I just said, I learned by example. 
So we don't get taught this in school. There's typically not an energetics of emotions and boundaries class for protecting your energy body. It's 444 Eastern. I love that. We don't get taught this. We don't get modeled this. If anything, we get modeled the opposite. Perform for people and you will be loved. Your value, this is, this is what I was given. I was taught your value is in direct proportion with what you can offer people. And so a lot of us overgive to get love. That's messed up. So our whole, like growing up as women, we're not modeled any of the stuff that I just taught. And then finally, when someone speaks it out, it's usually out of their trauma. So a lot of people coach out of their trauma. I've had a lot of those coaches and I thank them because I learned what I don't want to do. I thank them for the experience, but a lot of people coach out of their trauma and they just realize that there's a such thing as the word no, and that no is a complete sentence. And they teach everyone to just say no, cut everybody off. If they're not on your level, cut them off. And I'm like, did you forget that you were just on their level? Oh, but you took an XMH class and now you're in a high horse. Okay, cute. <laughs> What's model is the opposite. So everything that I'm teaching you right now, I literally learned by seeing it modeled. I watched examples of what's called sisterhood. And if you would have asked me a couple of years ago about that word sisterhood, it would have either felt neutral or weird to me. I would have been like, I'm here for business and making money. The sisterhood, schmisterhood. I got a bunch of sisters. So I don't need your little sisterhood training. I don't have any sisterhood wounds. I feel so sorry for people that have all this family drama, but I'm not in the boat. And so just give me the business classes. And then a good like year and a half in, I was like, oh shit, I got a, I, I have so many issues with women <gasps> that I, I was totally naive to. Oh, snip it, snip it. Time for the sisterhood conversation. Uh, <laughs> I spent, I, I literally, and I'm so proud of this. I'm so grateful for it. And I thank every person that I've ever paid, but I have spent over a quarter of a million dollars. I have spent over $250,000 on business trainings to learn sisterhood. To learn communication, energetics, big girl boundaries, not cutting people off. mutually conducive relationships, how to, how to be someone who has reciprocal relationships that are a win, 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 how to be a client. That's a win, win, win. Oh my God. Uh, how to not get triggered AF by other women and their drama, how to not be on my high horse all the time and think that I'm the cool one, how not to judge people. And how not to be the loud ghetto person that's always bringing their drama and expecting everyone else to hold it. Oh my God. Quarter million dollar education. I learned it by watching it be modeled. I learned how to cooperate with other people. And so that being said, I have two invitations for you to rise. Actually make it three. So if you're watching live, write three invitations to rise. Invitation number one, show up here tomorrow. I have so much more for you. I have so much more for you. On day two, we're going to talk about boundaries in business, how to set a boundary, setting boundary, boundaries in relationships. We're going to talk about energetics. We're going to talk about emotions and it's completely free. So my first invitation is bring your beautiful booty here tomorrow. We're gonna to be live again for day two of this training. That's your first invitation. Come back for day two. Your second invitation to rise is, I mentioned something about clear to soar and the sisterhood. 
Clear to Soar was a program that I ran for 15 days in the month of December around energetic management, clearing up energy leaks, emotional uh, resilience work, and clearing everything that is keeping you to the ground so that you are free and clear to soar. It was one of the most life-changing things I've ever done. Our clients are still talking about it months later. Sarah Friss is here. She said, it was fire. Jackie says, I need clear to soar. I think you would love it. Um, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal program. And I chose to gift that program to people for the year if they were inside of something else called the sisterhood. So your second invitation is to a space that is, I think, our most, I would say, cost-effective memberships that we run year-round. It's a space where you don't have to be an entrepreneur to be there. It's welcome to literally all women. And every single month we meet, our next meeting is this, this not this Friday, but the next one. So every month we meet on Zoom for an hour and I train on this stuff. I personally model sisterhood, emotional energetics, how to become more emotionally intelligent, like how to get out of a stuck place and into a place of emotional freedom. And for a year, I teach you the 10 tenets that gave me the energetics of who I am today. Now, this particular membership, it's open now. When you join, Clear to Soar is your bonus. So you get the whole Clear to Soar that you can walk through at any time as long as you have your membership. So that's your bonus. And the space that's called the Sisterhood um, again, we're meeting not this Friday, but next. So we haven't even met for this month. When you join, you get clear to soar. You get a, a vault of two trainings that have already happened from the sisterhood and you have access to the Facebook group for it and all future secret sisterhood meetings for the rest of the year. That space is like I don't even know how to give you context for it, but like other spaces of mine are multiple thousands of dollars a month. And the sisterhood is $77 a month. 77 bucks a month. A space on emotions, energetics, personal rituals. Like it's, it's a, it's a quarter million dollars of education on how to model sisterhood, boundaries, your personal power. It's $77 a month. So that's my second invitation to you. That space is the most cost-effective place that you can work with me in a client relationship with just, just by the way, if you watch me and you think this is great, like who you see on the internet right now for free is like one tenth of who I am with my clients behind the scenes. The topics that we talk about in our masterminds and in our private spaces, the depth that we go to, it's, it's unbelievable. The, the transformation that I see in clients behind the scenes when they do stuff like this, it's there's something else. And so if you've been like literally, if I've been on your list to work with, that place is the most cost effective place that you can be with me this year. And you are going to be surrounded by other people who are like you on this journey, growing and evolving together. So that's your second invitation. Yes. Raven said we get deep. Lacey said this space is held with such high integrity. I so appreciate it. Ah, and Jesse just dropped the link. So thank you very much. So you've got the option to do $77 a month times 10 months. That's what's remaining for the year. And you get all the bonuses when you sign up. Um, the third invitation that I have for you, the third invitation, which one should I tell them about? Okay, I'm gonna drop a hint first and I'm gonna say, if you were part of Clear to Soar or you like this kind of content, 
I'm just going to drop a hint that tomorrow there's going to be something crazy for you. Think like, think like live event conference vibes. We don't have links ready. It's going to be tomorrow. So come here tomorrow for that. Okay, so that's your teaser for tomorrow. But the third invitation that I have is if you are an entrepreneur or someone who is working on your money mindset, we have another micro subscription. So if you're live, right, micro subscription. I'm just telling you about the micro subscriptions today. Um, we've got the sisterhood for 77 bucks a month. And then we have another place that's for people who are working on their money mindset. And it will radically shift the way that you think about money, money ma manifestation, abundance, your ability to get money, your relationship with money, clearing money wounds, just it's it's everything that I personally walk through to become the type of person that makes a million bucks a year. It's called the millionaire's desk. And so your third invitation for today is it's called the millionaire's desk. We have three months left in that space. I always dreamed that there would be a hundred people in there. Around 88 is what's typically inside of there. It's a girlfriend's money club for money manifestation, wealth energetics, and acquiring more wealth. So that space, um, the people who have already joined it, you know, on average, they've paid up to like 1333 for the year for it. So anyone who joins now is going to pay the same. It's not like if you join later, you get it for cheaper. It doesn't work like that in my world. That's a personal boundary. So if you're wanting to work on your wealth energetics, I'm reopening the doors for Millionaire's Desk for the next three months. When you join, you immediately get a content vault of nine star-studded trainings, like wealth energetics trainings that will blow your fucking mind. Hands down. There's still three more trainings left. We meet every single month. And when I meet with those clients, it's a little bit higher ticket because I laser coach for like three hours. So if you've been looking for a place to actually get like some laser coaching type of a reciprocal relationship with me, the millionaire's desk is like the next tier up. We've got the sisterhood that's for anyone and the millionaire's desk is for our money mindset people. The millionaire's desk is going to be three payments because there's only three months remaining in the space which gives you nine trainings immediately when you join, three upcoming wealth energetics trainings, and there's also a mastermind component to it. So you get dropped in for our next mastermind, and each month I will laser coach the clients in that space for three hours in the afternoon. Casey just joined and she said, uh, the Millionaire's Desk is amazing. I've been watching through the vault and like needed to take a break because it's so good. Yes. Amazing. Lacey Graham said it's the best. So those are your three invitations. These are invitations for you to rise. I am the type of person that will drop bombs for free on the internet and invite you to the next move. I want to invite you to a reciprocal relationship with me. I want to invite you into reciprocal relationships with other women who think like you. There are alpha women out there that are like the most lonely people in the world because you're looking for that reciprocal power meets power relationship in the town that you live in or the people that you grew up with or with just the environment around you and you're not being met. Is there anyone who feels like you're just not being met? The conversations are not stimulating. The spaces are not stimulating. You're looking for the next edge. You're looking for your power to be met and matched. You're looking for a place to rise up next. These are my spaces. So I very lovingly invite you tomorrow, come back here. We're going to be live with a phenomenal day two of training. We're going to talk about setting boundaries. Okay. Second place is coming into the sisterhood. That space, I want, I want to see a hundred women in there this year. We're not quite up to a hundred. It's a phenomenal community. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Our next meet is later this month on a Friday. 
I would so invite you to be there. We meet live on Zoom and there's space for you to interact and meet other women like you. And the third place is the millionaire's desk. If you're looking for sisterhood and wealth energetics, that is the most impactful place that I can think of, of that type of content in the whole internet right now. I don't know of anything else like it. And you're so invited to join. It's three payments of 444. Sonia said, joining XMH world is legit finding your tribe. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. So that's day one of training. If you know somebody who should be here, make sure and share the, um, share the graphic for this training. It's here in the group. And we're going to be doing a draw later on this week. For those of you who share, make sure and tag me, invite your people. There are people here that they are ready to rise with you, but you have to invite them to rise. There are people that if you had this conversation and you were like, oh my God, did you watch the XMH training? You could save relationships. You could elevate the context of your relationships. There's so much available for you, but it's an invitation to rise. Okay. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. This has been amazing.